Welcome, one and all, to Hope Team League, where we showcase the best and brightest of North American up-and-comers in the StarCraft II scene. This is Polygon Gaming, where StarCraft II lives, and tonight we continue the round-robin stage of this league. Tonight's teams that will be playing are Psionic, Aftermath, and Risen. Itching to tell you all about them are our amazing casters, Venomous Stare and Volticus. Good evening, everybody. My name is Volticus, and I'm joined myself with my beautiful, sexy co-caster, Venomous. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Volt. Thanks for the intro. I'm very excited to jump into this series. We got Psyx facing off against Risen, and it should be a great one. I think so. A great way to start off a match. Two beautifully highly ranked GMs here. Terran versus Protoss will be our first matchup, and like that's in a bit of a interesting matchup at the moment, I think. Because you've seen people like, I think it was in the GSL versus the world, you had like Classic go all Oracle's like PVZ on uh, Innovation's ass. But what, what are your thoughts on the matchup at the moment? Well, I really like PVT, actually. I think it's one of the most compelling matchups to watch, especially if you count the mirrors. I think it's clearly better than all the mirrors. And a lot of times it comes down to which tech path Protoss is going to go towards. So I'm interested to see how our Risen player is going to play. I think so, yeah. It's, it's often about how fast you can tech. The Protoss is constantly trying to cut corners to get into that late game as possible. Because once the Protoss hits that late game, they've got this army that's just better than the Terrans. And the Terran has to use their different abilities. They have to use Liberators. They have to use their mobility to try and pull apart the Protoss. That's often how the match will go, especially in the late game. The mid game is a lot about these maybe frontal pushes with tanks, with large amounts of bio, but once as soon as Colossus comes out, Disruptors, Storms, all of a sudden the bio has to step back and let the support units start to deal all the damage because they're the units that really help just stop the Protoss, just like go, okay, I'll just A move into your base. Very excited. Jump in. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that I think you have to note as far as Protoss versus Terran is a lot of times the Terran player has a big opportunity to really get in there and do damage with drops. That's one of the things that I think just always is kind of an unspoken part of this matchup is the Terran player can really dominate with multitask and if the Protoss falls behind or doesn't get the appropriate amount of vision out, they can really get ripped apart by that drop harass. Absolutely, but there's so many different styles that the Terrans have found out to try and pull apart that Protoss. So you've got people like Major, they're going for these high progressive styles, trying to keep the mid game going on until 10, 12 minutes. It's crazy amounts of game, uh, mid game time. It's before these Colossus come out, it's just gateway units forever. I think Major did it very well against Neeb, the other, I think it was Austin, it might have been Montreal as well. However, I wonder, are we in game? I believe so. And we do have, yeah. And we do have ourselves spawning in the top left-hand corner, representing Risen. We have Fight Some Crime. And in the bottom right of the map, we have the Psyx player, Psyche. Beautiful. At least it's not like red versus orange. This is, this is quite nice because we have red versus yellow today. We do have our players freely choosing their colors. And out of our... Protoss player for Risen. We do have our very standard gateway expanses, just super conservative play. We don't have anything aggressive like two gate uh, two gate plays, so there's going to be no adepts knocking on the door nice and early here. Yeah, I, knows think, yeah. I think it's sorry. worth noting that the uh, Terran player opted for a Marine over a Reaper. This allows him to get that factory down and save that gas up. A lot of people might not realize it, but that 50 gas on that Reaper, actually a big deal, especially if you're going for some sort of quick tech. Absolutely, yeah. It means that you can save, uh, you know, workers on gas. You only have to go for that one gas geyser. That means you're going to increase your mineral income. So he's able to get more Marines out, which you can see by the barracks. And soon we're going to see a factory come down here. We're even going to see three CC off one Rex. One Marine, three CC. Yeah, very this greedy build here. <sighs> this is the epitome of greed, I think. I really like this build from our Terran player. Skipping the Reaper and then reallocating those workers from his gas is going to allow him to get a huge economy up. 
three CC mule is something that we hear a lot about versus Zerg, having that mineral power spike, the ability to really churn out bio quickly. But of course, it's very strong versus Protoss as well. So with two more racks coming, this is of course going to be bio. And a little interaction here was the Adept start fighting the Marines. The weak one gets microed back from Psyche and the Adept gets pushed back there. So clean micro from both sides and the Adept scout is somewhat denied. I see. He isn't going to be able to see those three CC down. That's the most important thing. He knows he has quite a number of Marines. So it is going to be that uh, reactor barracks. But he doesn't know what techs come after. He doesn't know if there's a factory down. And he has no clue that it's going to be three CC with three racks coming down. Yeah, and that's one of those things that it's kind of like a macro cheese in a sense that if you don't scout it, it can really catch you off guard and you can lose the game because of it in the same way that, you know, uh, your standard cheese would in terms of a tech attack, like two, two port banshee or something. But when you get an incredibly quick third like this and the Protoss player isn't aware of it and just plays standard and safe, the Terran can just accumulate a huge economic lead. So great move here by the Terran to hide his information with all of the Marines out front and then quickly expand and get a huge economy going like this. I think so, but we have played some crime. I've risen played, knowing something might be up here. He's going for two bases. And we've got six extra gateways coming down. Charge about to finish up. War Prism heading across the map. I think this is going to be a two base charge lot all in here. Oh yeah, this is a big one. The uh, tell on this, of course, is the lack of third and fourth gas. New players, if you're trying to figure out if you're being all in or not, if the number of gateways isn't indicative enough, sometimes this lack of gas can really tip you off. And a DT shrine coming off the back of this. So a lot of times with builds like this, we see the speed zealots come in, tear stuff up, get Terran kind of in disarray and behind, and then the DTs come. Absolutely, we do have Psyche doing quite a bit of preparation here. He's got plenty of bunkers down, but there is a hole in the wall. Will he get through? And he is deflected, but into the main comes the Warp Prism. The Zealots get dropped off, and these are Speed Zealots. But on ramps, they will not be able to get very much surface area. And now the Protoss player is running away. His DT Shrine is about 70% of the way done. The Terran player has a great choke here. Surely preventing the toss from fighting out in the open like he wants to. Combat shields and stim is about to be done. Both as we see a lot of STVs attempting to be pulled here. And the Terran player is going to try to fight between both of his buildings now. But he kites very well back into that choke. And the Protoss just can't get where he wants to be. And here he's actually going to try to fight. But the Terran just has so many Marines at this point. As you see another warp prism in the natural double prong action is what do you think about this fault this is crazy the true mvp here is definitely the sim city of psyche who's just constantly able to take chokes in every part of his base here however i think this double prong harass might be able to do quite a lot of damage here and to pull all the boys here with only a couple bits of bio to try and deal with this focusing down the war prism eventually going to start taking down these uh zealots here yeah, and here come the DTs. This is going to be the real world ender here for the Terran as the turret's going to go down. 3cc scan though, that'll be helpful and a turret is still at the main. So the Protoss player has not won yet by any means, but the DTs are going to be brutal if he can save them in the prism. 21 workers have gone down, and if we pick up the units tab, the Protoss is ahead by about a dozen. Now that number is moving. And this is what I mean, even with 3ccs, an intelligent player is going to be able to bait out scans. And it doesn't take very much intelligence to close the game with Zealots. The Terran falls way too far behind. And the tank is getting very low and it does fall. Is that one DT there. Nice micro there did not just clump all of his DTs. A lot of times it can be very tempting to run in with all the DTs and try to kill all the workers at once. But we're going to see another big warp in topside. Speed Zealots. And at this point, the Terran is down to about 22 workers. Beautiful hold position from Mike there, stopping the Zalots for even touching all that bio. Beautiful there. He's able to take down quite a lot more of these Zalots, but so many SCVs are going down. He's losing an entire two bases worth of SCVs there. He's only on 16 left. Yeah, he has lost a significant amount of workers and DTs for ravaging the main. Now, it is worth noting that there is no third base down for the Toss player. 
and the turret still is up at the natural. Okay, here, there it is. There's the GG. Sight calls it, and Risen will take the first game. Oh my word, what an intense first game of the night where it's just macro cheese versus two base all ends. Oh, now that. I, I like that. I like that quite a lot. We didn't quite see Sight getting, you know, fully fulfilling his game plan there. He didn't want to. He didn't quite get that third base going to the late game. Fly some crime. Savage. Truly savage. Yeah, I Maybe even that... brutal. Maybe even wrecked. Well, I don't know about wrecked because I thought the initial defense from the Psyx player was actually really strong. If you look at the way that he microed his marines within the context of where he had them relative to his buildings, I thought that was strong. His SCV micro was also very good. And I think that it looked as though the Terran was going to be able to hold for a hot minute. But the crux of the issue was really that second warp prism. Because the Terran's defense at the end of the day comes down to positioning relative to buildings. He can hold the main very efficiently versus speed zealots, but he has trouble defending two locations at once. So whenever that second warp prism came out in conjunction with the DTs, with the third or fourth wave of warp ends, the Terran player just wasn't able to hold the attack because so much of holding that specific all-in relied on SimCity. Absolutely, he just kept, uh, constantly just forced him out of position. He couldn't quite get the chokes once that second warp end came in because they were in the mineral line. He had to use hold position micro, had to pull the probes all the time. Just he kept losing them by the dozen. It was, it was so nasty. It was a great build from the toss, and there was no third base in sight. So I feel like perhaps if the Terran player had somehow held better, you know, for like the last two minutes up until the game ended. Maybe he can come back because you do have that 3cc mule option, but with that second warp prism coming out, like I said, it's just not really possible to defend in that situation. Absolutely. Psych would have had to have some crazy good micro and good engagements, constantly shutting down these warp prisms. If he got a snipe maybe off him, he would have been able to hold, but the unrelenting number of zealots, dark archons, uh, sorry, dark, dark templar coming in, it just force him just the constant guard position just pulled him apart his little size just slicing marines in half was never good the dps on those dts is crazy yeah and i think as i pointed out before he did the all-in the speed zealots set you up wonderfully for the dts because speed zealots in your base as terran is one of the hardest things to defend against personally because so much of marine micro is kind of being able to go out in the open and having a lot of room to kite back but if the speed zealots get on top of you, it can be very difficult to deal with, especially if there's upgrades. And then the Protoss player is in a position to intelligently snipe detection, if they so choose. So we're going to go back to Felipe here pretty quick. Thank you so much, Venomous. We are going to go to a quick commercial break here to check out some of our amazing sponsors, and then we'll be right back with more StarCraft II action. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.